What are you doing? I'm solid peppering my password. Hey folks, I'm Andrew and welcome to All Things I Am, where we talk about everything at any access management. In my channel, I want to really teach you I am in a more easy way for you to consume. So if you are somebody who wants to transition into I am or you are a fresh new hire in the I am space, congratulations on the job, by the way, and you want to learn more about I am, this is the right channel for you. So in my last video, I talked about I am 101, which is a building blocks of I am. I talked about authentication, authorization, and accountability. In this video today, I'm going to take authentication and break it down to several other videos for you. And in, in today's video, I want to talk about passwords. I hate passwords with a passion. But sadly, a lot of organizations today still use passwords. It's easy. So I'm going to talk about what are passwords, how easy they are to get hacked, and really what happens in the back end when it comes to passwords. And what I mean by that is when you go to a website and you create a new account, what happens when you type in your password and hit that submit button? What goes in the back end of the database to give you an, an idea of what's going on? So before I get started, let me give you a quick brief summary of authentication. So in authentication, we use three methods to really identify or prove I am who I am. The first one is what do I know, which are passwords, pins, maybe security questions. The second thing we can use is physical tokens. So a YubiKey, we can use a software app that tells you like a one-time password. And then the third thing is biometrics, which is more or less facial recognition. Your fingerprints are a couple ways. Even your voice is an option. So that's a brief summary of authentication and the three ways we can kind of use authentication from that perspective. And now let's go into deeply passwords. So as future IAM practitioners or current practitioners, when we talk to customers about passwords, the first questions I like to ask customers is, what's your password policy today? How do you enforce that? What goes behind the scenes when it comes to password policy? What do I mean by that? So password policies are things such as how long should your passwords be? What's the minimum? Is it eight characters, 10, 12, 24, for example? The second part of the password policy is, do you allow numbers, letters, uppercase, lowercase? Do you allow special characters? And then the third part of password policies is, do you allow the reusage of passwords? And if you do, what's the frequency or the history that you allow them to do that? On a personal note, I always suggest to customers we do not allow passwords in terms of rehistory because again most people are so easy they kind of want to reuse passwords again and again and again and just add like a one or a two to it it's easy to get hacked so technically what i always love to tell customers is let's say every 30 passwords you might be able to reuse again or let's not use password history at all and the fourth thing sometimes when i ask customers about their password policy is do you allow simple passwords what are simple passwords? Passwords, beach, your your name, your date of birth. People actually use those as their passwords, which is crazy, but it's true. You wanna know why passwords are awful? It's because of us humans. We make up the dumbest passwords known to man. We use the most easiest things that we can remember. We use our name, our kids' names, our date of birth. You know what's even funnier? We use password. We use passwords. And it's true because password is the number one used password that is used across the board. There are studies are out there that said, what is a common password out there? It's password. It's crazy. It's mind blowing. So when we talk about passwords and how that works behind the scenes, we want to be, be able to make sure it's secure. I talked about policies. Now let's talk about the ways that passwords can get encrypted. So we talk about policies, we think that it's policies should be standard across the board, right? Like when you go and create a new account, it should be out there and straightforward. But what's funny is some companies today don't do that at all. And here's an example. So I'm gonna blur out this company because I don't wanna get flack from them if I call them out. But look here, you can see this company here, there is no definition of what their password policy should be. So if I create this account here, so I'm gonna create my name, 
I'm gonna put in a last name, I'm gonna put in an email, I'm gonna put in the password. So let's just try password. Is it gonna let me do it? So I hit the create button. I didn't get an error message, which is mind boggling. So I'm assuming that means password is accepted, which means in the database, when I when I go and look at my account or in that back end, there are there is an account for me with a password, or my password is gonna be password when it gets decrypted, which again just it blows my mind. But now let's look at another example. So look at look, let's look at Gmail. So in Gmail, they tell you what their password policy is, which is good. It's a start. And again, we don't want to make our password policies too complex that our customers have no business or they go, you know what? I ain't doing this. This is too hard. But you also want to make it hard enough that hackers, because hackers will get into databases, that it takes them a longer amount of time to decrypt or crack that password. So let's talk about the processes of passwords. So like in my example, I went in, I created a new account, I put in my password. What happens in the back end? So in IAM terms or in the cybersecurity world, when we create a password and it's out there for the public, it's called plain text passwords or plain text. And that's just the simply term is it's easy, it's out there. There's no encryption or anything going on there. What typically happens is once you get that plain text password, it gets encrypted in some form. I mean, we never want to save plain text passwords out there to the public, right? Yeah, they did it. So, you know, it happens. It sucks. So when a password is created in the back end, we want to hash it. And you're like, what in God's green earth is hashing? Think of hashing as you take your password, your plain text password, and you scramble it up. In addition to that, you want to use some kind of algorithm. The two common ones are Message Digest or MD or Secure Hash Algorithms or SHA. Now, you take your plain text password, you take one of those algorithms, so let's, let's say we take SHA for example, and then we're going to take that combine them together and then it comes out this nice beautiful hash. So now you would think, hey, guess what? I used my plain text password. I used this hashing algorithm. I should be secure, right? Nope, not true. So when your password gets saved to a database and we wanna hash, another way for us to really make that password and the hashing much more secure is salt and peppering your passwords. Just like that silly intro that I use where I'm sitting there, you know, and I am just salting and, and peppering passwords. That's technically what we're doing here. Well, technically, I'm not salting or peppering password. Please don't do that. But let me talk to you more about what those two methods are. So, salting your password is essentially you're taking your plain text password and you're adding a value to the end of your password. So, let's make an example, right? So let's say I take that password example of password that I used earlier in the video. I use a random value. I'm gonna take password, add a random value to the end of that password, and then I'm going to hash that using let's say SHA-256. And now my hash is totally different. The nice part about salting is that value at the end of my password, it's random, which is great. Now the little downfall or the part that is not secret about salting is those values are actually saved in the database itself. So if somehow the database gets hacked and the hackers find those salting values, they can figure it out from that perspective. So that's really the 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 bad part, or I'm, I'm not sure it's really a bad part, but it's really the only con, I guess, of salting is the fact that it is not secret, it's actually saved in the database. Now, another method is pepper or peppering your password. Now, similar to salting, what you do is you take, again, your plain text password, you take the end value and you add it together. But here's the difference. In peppering your password, that value is static. So it doesn't change at all. Where in salting, it does. The difference is though, the, the value, it's secret. So ask yourself, why do I need to secure my password like that? Why can't I just use SHA-256 or MD5 with, with my plain text password and encrypt that together? 
The problem is hackers have two ways that they can really hack it or crack your passwords. Number one is an attack called a dictionary attack. Really what that is, is simple. They take all the common passwords that, that they have and they go in and, and they add that all the time when they log in. Bang, bang, bang. Every single time. So take, the, take a random username and let's say they figure it out. And then they say, you know what? I'm going to just randomly throw in passwords in there and hopefully it hits. So what I didn't talk about earlier when we talk about your password policies is hopefully your customers has lockout policies. And what I mean by that is simple. You can set a value in, let's say, Active Directory, for example, that most of my customers use today that say after five failed passwords, the account is disabled, right? Hopefully, that's something that customers implement today because if they don't, those dictionary attacks will work and they'll use software to go in and just pop in the value every single time and hit, hit, hit until they find that value. Another way that they can attack is called a rainbow attack or using a rainbow table. So what that is, is it's a massive table of hashes. And again, it takes those common passwords and it takes the common algorithm. So again, MD5, for example, SHA-1, SHA-256, and it'll take the output hashes, it'll store it. And what will happen is if a hacker has access to your database and they find all the hashes of a customer information, they'll go and start to search and find saying, hey, what matches from my rainbow table into those values and see if I can figure out the password there. The interesting part too is they don't need the full hash to get access. They can take bits and pieces and once they make that match, they'll just say, okay, that's the part of the password. Let me figure out the rest. And then that's when boom, that happens is they'll eventually figure out the rest after a couple of hours of running some scripts. They'll figure out your password and get access and go to town on whatever your account is. Or sadly, if you're a person that saves your credit card information to your account, they might be able to buy stuff off your account. Not always the case, but it can happen. So again, that's why when we secure our passwords in the back end, we want to make sure that we use, again, plain text password plus a hashing algorithm plus adding either salting or peppering your passwords. So I just gave you a small dosage of passwords and how they're encrypted in the back end. There are people out there who do this for a living and they know tons of cryptology, they know encryption, and they give you more and more information. But I really wanna give you something that you can really consume easily. And for people who are getting the IAM, it's good to have these questions in your back pocket. Again, we go to customers, hey, what's your password policy today? Do you have a password policy? Oh, you don't? Well, let me give you some guidance or some best practices. How do you guys handle encryption when you say passwords? These are great questions to ask. And again, they're simple. And then what you always want to do is when you go into customer sites, you know, have a person with you who knows more technically and they can answer more questions that are more down in the weeds, but at least you're getting the conversation started. And that is all you need to know is to get the conversation started and then you build from there. So in the next video, I'm going to talk more about physical tokens and software one-time passwords or authenticators, as we call it. You know, common ones such as Microsoft Authenticator, LastPass, Google has Authenticator. These are common ones on people's cell phones. And I'm gonna talk more about how that works today. If you have other ideas or future videos you want me to talk about, again, tell me down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to create a video for that. So I'll leave you with this. Passwords are not going anywhere, even though I know Microsoft has started to move away from passwords or what we call passwordless. And my hope is sometime in the future, we can get to where we could remove passwords altogether and use other methods to really authenticate ourselves. But in the meantime, when you do create a password on a website, just be cognizant, right, of what you do. So again, you'd be surprised how awful passwords are from easy somebody asking simple questions or I know some of you, I know some of you, or you know somebody that will put their password on their monitor. Oh, I can't tell you how much that frustrates me. If this and everything else I am is something that interests you, please subscribe down below, hit that notification button, so when a new video drops, you'll be notified that, hey, something for me to learn more about I am, that'd be awesome. And until then, as I always say in all my videos, stay curious, because you never know. Have a good one, thank you.